On this episode of Mere Mortals, I ditch my hood prop for a hood strut. I'll be installing the USP Motorsports hood strut for my 2017 Mark VI Volkswagen Jetta. Included in the kit is two mounting brackets, self-tapping screws, and a gas shock. Also, stick around till the end where I make some bad choices and see what happens when you install two kits on the same hood. So I'm going to assemble this off of the car. We're going to start with this bracket. We're going to take the smaller one of these posts. We feed it through this hole. And then on the back side, you can see there's different size nuts. We're going to take one of the thinner ones. We're going to tighten that down by hand. Okay, so I've got my 13 millimeter wrench on this side, 13 millimeter socket, just tighten them up. Good. There. So now we're out working on the car. As you can see, I have the hood propped with the factory hood prop. We're next going to remove this 10 millimeter nut and put our bracket in place. So you can see it doesn't really line up perfectly. And I think that's because this sticks out a little bit right here. So I started off putting a slight bend in it with a pair of needle nose pliers, just a bigger set, and just rolling it under. And then now what I think I can do is tap it a couple of times with a hammer and then roll it under, just trying not to chip the paint off. So I bent it down too far. This was hitting in the back. So I can't go this way. So if I come from this direction and seat it and then just slide it back, nice and flush. Let's go ahead and replace factory nut and washer. One other thing I did, you see the plastic here. I, uh, so this, I just picked it up and tuck it behind here. Let's tighten it down. It doesn't have to be super tight. feels really sturdy. So for these screws, um, you need an eight millimeter socket and you need a quarter inch drive. I don't have one. So <laughs> I made this contraption, an old extension, quarter inch, put it in my drill. I know not ideal, but it'll work. Um, tightened it and just got it started. There we go, that one punched through. Now I just got started, I'm not trying to drill it in because again, this is not a very good way of doing it. There we go, just snug it up a bit. I wanna back those out and put a little touch up paint in there just so nothing starts to rust. So you can get touch up paint right from the dealer. That's what I did is just ordered this from the parts department. The day I got my car, I went in and did that because I knew I'd get rock chips and things over time. So it's always been nice to have on hand for any time I need to touch up the paint and just make sure I'm not gonna get rust. So just using it like a pen, drawing over anything that looks like bare metal now. So this one right here, we're gonna remove, it's 13 millimeter. Put that right here for now. So we're gonna do the top bracket now. And when it goes into the car, it's gonna be going in in this configuration and you're going to have 13 millimeter nut. So if you can see in the background, 
it goes in this direction, 13 millimeter nut connects onto that post. What is up my riders? Right now I'm tightening the screw. For that one, I'm leaving it. <laughs> We're not having Cool Ranch Doritos for breakfast. That was my cameraman, or at least supposed to be my cameraman this morning. So for the top mount, we're gonna put a post, the spacer. Now, in the video that was done by USP five years ago, they don't tell you what to do with this washer. I'm assuming it goes here, and then the nut. So I'm gonna put this all together and tighten it down. 11 millimeter. To hold the post, 13 on the back side. Just remember that you're putting the longer post for the top bracket. So inside each one of the rounded ends, they have this pin, I assume holds uh, the uh, post. So the round part goes in there, you go like this, spin it and then pull it out. Don't lose these. Now we're gonna put these on. This bottom post is really tight. I'm gonna start with it. It goes down toward the car and the fender, and the upper side goes, the shorter, or sorry, the thinner side goes toward the hood. So there seems to be about as good an angle as I can get being my own cameraman, because my other one is eating Cool Ranch Doritos. So I'm gonna start from the top maybe, and see if I can't, roll it on around the edge. So that's what we've got to do. Start from the top and then it'll just clear. And then we'll... There we go. So I've got this fully on there now. And then I roll, rolled the pin through, if you can see, and now I'm just gonna clip it by pressing it this way. There we go. So that side is clipped. Now I'm gonna undo the hood prop and try and lower this into place. So for now, I'm gonna leave this one just here, hanging out. Try and get around my camera rig and hold it from a mile away. There. I am not gonna breathe hard because I don't want this thing to fall apart. But now I'm gonna do the top one. There we are. And let's try and give it a couple of tests open and close this, shall we? Make sure nothing's binding. That feels really nice. Let's try closing it. There we go. It's fully installed. Now let's take the hood prop out because it's not 1985 and we don't need it anymore. I have hated this hood prop since the day I got the cover. So one final thought, the only thing that kind of bugs me is it's not symmetrical. Um, I know I have the one on this side kind of want one over there too. There we go. That's better. Now let's see how it works. So let's examine some of the differences between the two shocks. Everything for the most part bolts up. You can follow the exact same instructions as we did before. The difference you're going to see, and I'm going to put them side by side, is where this hole is drilled for this bottom post. It's drilled actually a little off center closer um, on the passenger side to the upper bracket. And what I ended up having to do to, to kind of lengthen this is you can unscrew these tips. So I unscrewed this one a little bit and you can see I put um, a couple washers in there to take up the space and then tighten it again. So everything is nice and tight. All right, so closing it. It takes a little bit more force, but 
it's not bad. So it comes down to about here and then it closes. And I can push it shut, so that seems good. So in the question of can you install two USP Motorsport hood struts to one hood? Yes. Should you? No. It's overkill. It's pointless. Um, you have to hold on to the hood when you open it because it will spring open with a lot of extra force. The only thing you really gain is if you are ever worried about supporting the hood with only one hood strut and you know later on would it ever fall on your head. If you have two, the chances of that are very, very, very small, if not impossible. So save your money.